tarnished, are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Over the years, I have played many Soul games in my time. I've played Bloodborne, Dark Souls 3, Sekiro, and that's about it. The other three don't matter to me. So I am pretty familiar with the Soul games, and now they've released Elden Ring. Then I would later on buy the game and stream it. After two painful weeks, I finally completed Elden Ring. And what do I think? I think Elden Ring is a absolutely phenomenal game. However, is it a 10 out of 10 in my eyes? I don't know about that. When you start the game, it's going to be like you walked into an art museum. Beautiful landscapes, starry skies, secret underground boss arenas that look more beautiful than the most high budget games. Please, accept my apologies for the confusion. You're gonna have beautiful moments like these that you wish that there was an in-game feature where you can take photos. What a scoop! Nice. But there isn't. All you can do is sit there and enjoy the view. Moments like these come in many because now this Soul game is open world. Normally in a Souls game, it makes you follow one long restricted path with other branching paths leading to different areas and bosses, but one path regardless. So follow the path, find a few bosses, then reach the end and fight the final <gasps> boss. The end. Not really much to it. However, Elden Ring takes these restrictions and completely shatters it. This is the combination of all the slow games rolled into one. This is Dark Souls, the finale. You're no longer taking the right way. Now, every way is the right way. When you start in Limgrave, yeah, you can walk up here and go straight to the boss, or you don't go there. Instead, you go down here, and you find this little castle area, which has this little mini boss down here. Or, how about here? What's this place? Well, it's the place where you're going to die 50 times, so don't go there. Maybe you explore this forest and find an elevator leading to this underground city, or go to this volcano, or this city, or this giant tree, a flying island, the Lake of Rock. There are so many different places to explore that we can't shy away from the variety of enemies. First, it starts you off subtle, you know, you find a few villagers, soldiers, knights, knights on horseback, and dragons. Then it goes from typical medieval stuff to Lovecraftian horror bullshit. You fight giant bugs, giant farting tumors, this thing that hits you 20 times, this dog that hits you for 11,000 damage, tree people, Mozilla Firefox, mutant dogs, slimes that turn into you, a ball made of faces, a ball made of iron. Just when you think the enemies can't get any weirder, you end up fighting a giant potato, and the boss is I haven't seen bosses this good since Bloodborne. Every time you enter that fog door and see their introduction, you're invested. You want to know more about them due to the fact, well, they can actually talk now. Only to realize this is a fleeting thought, masking itself over an ass whooping that's about to happen in the next few seconds. It's amazing how they can make such bloodthirsty bosses into interesting characters that make you wonder what happened to them before your character arrived in this mysterious broken world. With each installment of a Souls game, there's always going to be new mechanics, and Elden Ring doesn't shy away from this. You can now ride a horse to make traversal around the map easier, like going up impossible slopes, double jumping, these weird wind circles that boost you up in the air, negating fall damage, and collecting materials easier. What are the materials for? Well, it's meant for crafting. My favorite thing about it is that you can literally beat this entire game without even taking a glimpse into the crafting, and that's what I like about it. If you do use it, it lets you make buffs, greases for your weapon, knives, and antidotes to make your life easier. And last, Elden Ring added something that we were more excited than any of the stuff that I have talked about so far. You can now jump. Which doesn't sound exciting, it's not revolutionary, but when it comes to the Soul games, it's pretty revolutionary. Now with the jump, you can dodge attacks easier, and do jump attacks that are quicker than charge attacks. Which brings me to my next topic. No! 
Now, in my personal opinion, the weapons in previous Soul games are boring. However, in Elden Ring, there are a lot more crazier weapons here. There's this blood katana, a sword that literally splits the world in two. There's even a sword that's just a giant finger. But these are just special weapons. If it was a normal weapon, you can imbue them with Ashes of War. I didn't really use them a lot, but they're fun. I especially like the one where you could cause self-harm to yourself for a sweet damage buff, which is usually bad in the real world, not gonna lie. Now let's talk about the spells. I also didn't use the spells either. And with all this stuff to use, it's very easy to create some wacky builds. Now the builds go into two different classes, melee and magic. Within each class, there are many builds you can choose from. For melee, you can run with strength build, a dex build, bleed build, or if you want some magic in your life, you can do a faith, madness, or a mage build. But you're not restricted to choose one or the other. You can actually do both if you want. Now there is one more new mechanic that is practically overpowered, and that is the spirit summon. Why? Because why fight your own battles when you can watch from afar, take all the credit, and receive all the rewards? Just like real capitalism. There are tons of spirits to summon, but we just narrow it down to one because the only person you can rely on is yourself. All jokes aside, the reason why there is so powerful is because when you fight a boss or any enemy, their lock-on will shift towards the spirit and not you, allowing you to get free hits in to the point where it's no longer a challenging boss, it's an execution. But to be honest, I can understand why they would use these, because despite all these spirits, wacky builds, new mechanics, the beautiful landscapes, and plenty of stuff to explore, that you're forgetting about one thing. This was made by From Software. Do you know what that means? Falling off the map. 53 deaths, enemies, 217 deaths, mini bosses, 221 deaths, bosses, 439 deaths, and dying with loading in the game, one death, making a total of 931 deaths. Why am I telling you this? Well, it's the hell is that? It's a little bit difficult. I'll be honest, compared to the other Soul games, this is one of the most difficult. Now, do I think Elden Ring is bad because of it? Not at all. In fact, it makes the game more rewarding to beat something that's been giving you so much trouble. The thing is, how hard does it difficult need to be to border from satisfied and enjoyable to frustrated and go fuck yourself. Market is the first main boss in the game. I died to him about 34 times, which doesn't seem bad, but this is the first boss. In most Soul games, the first boss is usually the tutorial boss to teach you how things work, like Gundir from Dark Souls 3 or the Cleric Beast from Bloodborne. But in this case, the game is saying, hey, this game is open world, level up, and then come back. And either three things would happen. They would go back and level up and then come back later. Is it over? Two, ignore the game and fight the boss with the levels they have until they beat it. Three, they do number two, succumb to failure and go on Twitter and complain. I choose number two because I wanted a challenge. And after I beat him, I decided I didn't want to summon people or summon spirits for the whole game. I would later regret this decision for the rest of the game because I had the misfortune of running into three particular bosses that would drive me absolutely insane. Radon was the third hardest in the game for me. He killed me 52 times and took me two days to beat. Same as Moog, except I died to him 76 times. He's the second hardest. The last one, compared to these two, they're fucking easy. That that person is Melania. She's hard because she's somewhat unbalanced. Combos you can't dodge out of, heals every time she hits you, or she can just grab you and one-shot you. Literally. After 141 deaths, three days of trying, I finally beat Melania, and I was finally satisfied. And then I realized that all three were options. Despite the rant I went on, I really do enjoy this game. I would talk about the glitches and inconsistent frame rate that I've experienced along with others that were on YouTube, like speedrun glitches, horse glitches that would suspend you in midair and killing you, or random crashes. But recently, From Software have been releasing patches fixing most of these bugs. They really do want to make this game as perfect as can be. My favorite patch was when they completely nerfed Radon. So now I can safely say that I beat Radon without any summons or spirits before the patch happened. I would also talk about the endings, but I'll let you guys see them for yourself. I feel like I've spoiled enough for you. This is truly a phenomenal game, and I do recommend others to try it out. However, I can't give this game a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10s are for games that everyone is going to enjoy, and if you've seen Twitter, not everyone is going to enjoy games like these. So, with that said and done, I'm giving Elden Ring a big 9 out of 10.